Shove it, man! It's a new day on the Shove It Show, and the Hawk is here to rain on those who don't fit and give a golden punch to the gut of those who don't submit, don't quit, and rise out of the pit they were in to begin with. Today's episode of Ring of the Hawk is a Patreon request from Lottie McCulloch. If you want to make the Hawk squawk, sign up today. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, <coughs> shut their name in the comment section, Jack! Okay, okay, Laurel Van Ness, will she make the Hawk say yes? This is one of those Ring of the Hawk episodes where I distinctly remember the first part of the run, but I have absolutely no recollection of anything past a certain point. I know that this run is going to be strong on the character side of things. It might even be a bit stupid at times, but at least stupid is fun to laugh at. Also, just a quick message to Mid Cardona. Stop stealing my shtick or I'll slap you in the nuts. Professional. Uh, hey, Slappy, say hello to the Major Marks. <laughs> <laughs> A wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. Mid Cardona is of course married to today's competitor who might be better known as Chelsea Green. He might want to look away though because today's video will show how he got sloppy seconds off a baldy beanie cap wearing Billy Corgan beach ball called Braxton. And a Scottish sloth looking lump of smouldering shit. So LVN debuts on some one night only shows which of course don't count for Ring of the Hawk. So not a good start. Her official impact debut sees her aligned with Maria as a heel. This whole thing's basically about them bullying Ali who's their assistant and getting her sympathy cheers for her. Her character is established straight away as a rich snobby girl. Match 1, number 1 contenders gauntlet battle royal. Laura Van Ness who actually starts this match and she'll face off with Jade. To begin the match Laura asks Jade to kiss her hand but she doesn't want to do it. Both girls smack the shit out of each other. Laurel scores the first takedown when she catches Jade's leg. Laura now hits a snap mirror into a throwback. Sienna enters the match now as Jade hits a gut wrench suplex on Laurel. She charges back into the match with a clothesline. Laurel and Sienna are friends so they work together. The next lady out is Gail Kim who hits a diving forearm to LVN. Gail also hits her with a net breaker. The good times are over my friends. Marty Bell is the next girl out. She argues with Laurel over who's going to beat up Jade. Up next it's Raquel. She struggles to get into the ring but she somehow takes everybody out. She drop kicks Laurel. No one has been eliminated yet. Madison Rain is in now, she also takes everyone out. She hits a step up in Zaguri to LVN. Raquel is marching around celebrating and holding her arms in the air. So Laurel grabs her arms and hits her with an unpredia. What the hell was Raquel doing? Jade kicks Laurel in the head to get rid of her for a bit. Later Laurel manages to get Madison on the ring apron. And in a complete shock, Laurel spears her off the ring apron and she's out. Marty Bell is happily celebrating eliminating Jade when Laurel sneaks up and also eliminates her. This is quite an incredible Ring of the Hawk debut. Laurel is now down to the final three. Sienna wants to beat up Laurel but Maria stops her because she wants them to work together. Ali then pulls the rope down as Gail Kim throws Laurel out of the match. Winner of the match is of course Gail Kim with the eat defeat. Certainly not the worst debut I've seen, it's a C. Match 2, Gap Eyed Bitch Madison Rain vs Laurel Van Ness with Ali. Laurel wants Madison to kiss her hand, instead she gets punched in the face. Madison hits a running drop kick and Laurel has to bell. She asks Ali to redo her makeup. She charges back into the ring and she gets a drop toe hold. Laurel continues losing as she misses a charge in the corner. Madison then makes a mistake on the ring apron and LVN pokes her in the eyelid and knocks Madison off the apron. She gets her back in the ring for a two. She hits a snap mirror now into a shove with her foot and a running chop. The crowd boo. A scoop slam doesn't get the job done either. Laurel is too distracted by the crowd which allows Madison to come back with three close pinfalls. It's only going one way now. Madison now with a short arm into a northern light suplex for a fourth two count. Laurel manages to fight her off again with some eyelid offence. And there it is, somehow LVN wins with a running stomp to Madison's back. Laurel is upset with Ali after the match who pronounced her name as Laurel Vaness. Liking her character work but I'm not sure about the wrestling, it's a C. Between these two matches Laurel is seen backstage wiping sweat off Braxton's bald head. She reveals that both her and Ali have a thing for him. Match 3, Laurel Van Ness vs Ali. Laurel keeps shoving Ali until she shoves back. Ali is basically scared of her. Laurel backs into her corner and hits some shoulders. Laurel with a hair mare now. She isn't in a rush to do any damage and she tries to crush Ali's hand. LVN yanks on her hair now from behind like a Friday night in the Hawks home. Now we get another hair mare. Not once, not twice, but thrice and it sure wasn't nice. After some trash talking, Ali finally slaps her but Laurel clotheslines her down straight away. She throws Ali out the ring. Laurel sort of beats her up on the outside but she takes way too long arguing with the fans. Laurel misses her attack against the steps and the match has turned. In the ring now Ali takes her down with a double leg and smacks her. 
The crowd are firmly behind Ali. Laurel misses another attack and Ali almost gets the roll up win. Ali is stupid and starts arguing with the referee. When she stops, she gets kicked in the gut and hit with a stomp. That's the three. I can't fault this match. The point was to make people care about Ali and Laurel certainly helped them do that. So it's a C. I can't grade higher because it was an incredibly slow, boring match. Laurel continues to tease Ali and rub it in her face that she's getting close to Boldhead Braxton. Match four, tag match. Laurel and Sienna with Maria and Ali versus... Mini Moose. We know she's been training every week. Hey, she just this is gonna suck. And her partner is Madison Rain. Laurel to start this one with Brandy, but she's distracted and she chases Maria around the ring. Laurel charges at her but misses and then she just slaps Madison anyway. Brandy tags her in and she takes down a few times with her weak ass offense. Madison is now using the spinning back slap, almost shades of awesome Kong there. Sienna tags in because LVN is getting her ass handed to her. LVN helps Sienna stay on top of the match. LVN back in now, she chokes Madison with a boot and chokes her across the rope. That's about it and she tags out again. Later LVM with the hair mare. Not once, not twice, but thrice and it sure wasn't nice. Madison's not going to have any hair left if she keeps getting it yanked. Madison with an arm drag into a pin now. It's just a two on Laurel. First big wrestling move for Laurel now. It's a suplex. She doesn't try hard with the pin so it's just a two. Laurel misses her big stomp and Madison hits the clothesline for the double down. Both ladies tag out. Brandy Rhodes is in the ring now and she's winning the match so LVN has to get involved. She breaks up a pin and throws Brandy into the floor. She's impressed with her hard work and thinks it's a good time to taunt. So Madison kicks her in the head to send her out the ring. The match is won by Brandy Rhodes with a flatliner. This match made me think of one thing and one thing only and that's diarrhea. It sucks Ow. Sunny Siaki's ass. The move sucked and there was nothing to like. It's an ass. Laurel reveals at Thanksgiving that when she was younger she was known as Laurel Van Yes. <laughs> Way to go Mid Cardona. Bold boy Braxton seems like he's not really too bothered about Laurel and he prefers Ali. There's just not much in-ring action going on here. Match 5, Laurel Van Ness with Maria vs Ali. It turns out now that Braxton Sutter has been training Ali to wrestle behind LVN's back and he joins Ali for this match. Laurel is livid about this, she looks like she's dumping in her nappy of anger. She puts that anger to good use and takes Ali down with an arm drag. Ali does her own arm drag and the crowd love it. More arm drags. Laurel weakly sends Ali into the corner now and then she weakly runs into Ali's boot. Now Laurel catches Ali and she sweeps her leg out. LVN yanks on the hair from behind while screaming at Braxton. Ali fights back with some punches. And here it is, massive move now, it's a suplex. And then we get a double down because they both must be exhausted for doing basically nothing. Bold Boy fights Mike Bennett on the outside of the ring. He's obviously married to Maria so that's what that's about. They fight away from the ring and Ali is distracted by that. Laurel attacks her from behind and hits a running face buster. She tries to running stomp but misses it. Ali then wins with an inverted DDT. As basic as it gets, Ali kisses Bold Boy to celebrate Show a win. Me. It's an S. Again, no matches for ages. The storyline with the Lady Squad versus Ali continues though. Laurel rubbed Braxton's bold head in her boobs and left with him. He seemed confused by this. It turned out that Maria was blackmailing Braxton to stay away from Ali, or she would have her killed. She also forced Braxton to go on a date with Laurel Van Ness. It was here that it was revealed that Laurel has a drinking problem. Why does Braxton Sutter wear a beanie everywhere he goes? I think he's ashamed of what's under there. Somehow, the blackmail got so out of hand that Braxton agrees to marry Laurel Van Ness. Laurel keeps reminding Ali that she needs to make sure that she's got the wedding bed sorted. Why don't they just both quit Impact if they're that scared of Maria's crew? More comedy action now as they have a wedding on Impact. They decide to invite Ali and Bold Boy takes jaw dropping to new levels. They knew this whole thing was ridiculous. Anyway, they don't actually get married. When it gets to the I do's, LVN says I do, but Bold Boy says I don't. He says he's sorry, but he says that one day there's a man that she'll make completely miserable. Poor mid-card owner. He says he's in love with Ali. This rejection causes a big character change in LVN and also causes some of the worst acting ever seen on wrestling programming. She becomes a drunk with lipstick smeared all around her face. She never takes off her wedding dress and her feet are black. Let's get back to some match action because it's been way too long at this point. Match 6, 7 months later, Jesus, it's not even like she left the company. Ava Story vs Laurel Van Ness with Congo Kong. As I established in my earlier Congo Kong video, it was revealed that for some reason she was in control of him and it seemed like they might have a thing going on. It was never explained. Ava almost rolls her up straight away from the bell. Laurel is stumbling around the ring drunk, but she does manage to hit a lucky spear. She screams at the crowd to complete silence. Laurel gives her opponent a bulldog. Wow, Laurel just loves pulling hair. Laurel screams I'm going to kill you and she kicks Ava in the face. She shushes the crowd like they were even making noise in the first place. Laurel hits her stomp with Ava falling down way too early so it looks terrible. 
She runs around Congo Kong in the ring with happiness with the win. I'd like to say I'm glad to get back to some match action after all this time, but I'm not. Simply terrible, isn't it? Match 7, Knockouts Championship. Okay, how has she earned a title shot? It's Laurel Van Ness with Sienna. Why don't any of her friends want her to get help? And how did she even get to India looking like this? Oh, just when I say that, Josh Matthews knows what I'm thinking and says her rich dad flew her over privately. She takes on the Knockouts Champion, Rosemary. So it's two people with serious mental health problems competing, but nobody cares about them. Laurel charges, but she gets clotheslined. Rosemary punches her and kisses her. The match is turned because Sienna cheats from the outside. Laurel slams Rosemary's head into the mat a few times and falls over. She does manage to hit a few kicks, but she's too distracted and runs around in circles of happiness. She misses her next kick and Rosemary's up now. She hits a nice overhead suplex, which is the nicest move of the video so far. And of course, it's not from our girl. Sienna is on the ring apron now, causing a distraction. Laurel almost runs into her, but she puts the brakes on. And then Rosemary wins with the roll-up. What a pile of bird turn. It's yet another oh, fucking no. ass. Oh yeah, and she still seems to be feuding with Ali. Hasn't it been about a year at this point? Match 8, tag match. Sienna teams up with her best friend for some reason, Laurel Van Ness. Someone needs to check this girl into rehab, for God's sake. They take on Ali and Rosemary. Rosemary clotheslines both her opponents on the ramp. She also smashes them both in the corner. Ali then follows it up in the corner. Sienna turns the match around and unwisely tags her partner back in. LVN chokes Rosemary across the ropes. Then she hits a running drop kick, which is pretty nice. She gets some good height. Despite that, Ali makes it into the ring and she takes out Laurel with a code breaker. Sienna gives Rosemary a German suplex, which gives Laurel an opportunity to hit a curb stomp. And believe it or not, that's the free. Sienna tells her best friend how beautiful she is and they leave. It's a D, I didn't hate this one, she had a little bit more to do here. Match 9, 6 person mixed tag. Sienna, KM and Laurel Van Ness versus Boldy Sutter, Ali. God, I'm getting sick of seeing these people together. And they also team up with Rosemary. Ali and Laurel fight again because they always do. Nothing happens, Ali whips her across the ring and she just stops and tags out. After a while, KM tags her in, she gets kicked in the head straight away. Rosemary also hits her with a release fisherman suplex. The pin is broken up and the match breaks down. Ali and LVN are hitting the fakest looking punches I've ever seen in the corner. Laurel does have a new finisher now. It's a jumping and prettier, which she does to Rosemary. Ali stops her with a Death Valley driver. Moments later, the match ends when Rosemary sprays LVN in the face with green mist. She finishes her off with the Red Wedding. A bowling shoe ugly match. It's an S, there's no need to guess. Match 10, Laurel Van Ness, who still has Rosemary's green mist all over her. When did she last shower, by the way? And she once again takes on Ava's story. Well, it's the exact same story. Ava almost rolls her up straight away. But this match is slightly different because we get a rolling pin. As if Laurel wasn't dizzy enough already. Laurel is able to block a move in the corner and she throws Ava from the top. She forces Ava's face into the turnbuckle. Coming off the ropes now, Laurel hits a kick, but then she misses the curb stomp. She tries another kick, which Ava blocks, and she switches it into a net breaker. Ava kicks her leg out again now. She follows her out of the ring, but they come back to the ring. Laura is the first in, and she hits a DDT off the ropes. That old chestnut. Laurel runs around the ring with happiness and hits the curb stomp, which only looks slightly better than the last time she did it to Ava. At least she won on her own this time. Wait, after the match, Grado is here, who's being deported for obesity issues. He says Laurel is the most beautiful creature he's ever seen. He has to Netflix and chill with her. He's only doing this because he wants to marry an American to get a US passport and stay in the country. Unfortunately, he's a complete idiot because Laurel is Canadian, so it won't help him in any way. A few weeks on, Grado is still waiting to be deported. Laurel Van Ness emerges on his final appearance. She's finally had a bath. And it's quite a shock seeing her look this way after seeing her look like trash for so long. She thanks Grado for changing her and she asks him if they'll get married. I guess she's an idiot too then. She kisses Grado on the floor, one of the cringiest things I've ever seen, and it went on forever. I'm going to need to start grading segments rather than fucking matches at this point, and this one would sure be an S. It was revealed a few weeks later that Laurel was Canadian, so marrying her wouldn't resolve Grado's obesity issues. Something we've all worked out weeks before this, but these two are apparently too stupid to figure that out. Grado dumps her, which causes her to flip out and rub lipstick all over her face. That's two weddings that have gone wrong for her. She literally had no match for three months. I think she's a bit of a Kevin Nash. She likes to be an on-screen character only. She was now hanging out in the crowd begging for her husband. Match 11, Turkey Bowl. 10-person mixed tag. Caleb Connolly, Laurel Van Ness, KM, Phantasma and Chris Adonis versus Eddie Slapnut Edwards, Falabar, Garza Jr, Ali and Richard Justice. Laurel rides on Richard Justice. Ali stops her ride and she smashes her in the corner and hits a diving, running something. Laurel leaves the match. This match goes on forever and I'm pretty sure the comedy team are drunk for this match. Maybe they were hanging out with Laurel. The match is won by Eddie fucking Slapner Edwards because of course it is. 
Chris Adonis has to wear the turkey suit as he's the man who lost. It's an ass. Match 12, triple threat for the number one contendership for the vacant knockouts title. Once again, I'm dumbfounded how she could even be in the running for this. She takes on Casey Spinelli and Madison Rain. They all look bored. Laurel is cross-eyed and Madison is gap-eyed. She is shoved down by the two other girls. Madison watches Laurel roll up Spinelli, but I guess she doesn't want to win because she just watches it happen. She almost rolls up Laurel now. We also get a rolling pin. Why don't they try and do some damage before making their pins? Casey Spinelli throws Laurel to the floor and then hits a discus forearm. She puts on a coat and wastes 20 seconds rubbing it over her shoulders. If she's cold, she could try running on the spot. Laurel some hair grab takedowns now. Now she kicks Spinelli into the turnbuckle. They start fighting on the ring apron. Laurel gives her a pump kick. She tries another one on the ring apron, but she's stopped and thrown onto the apron. Madison gets a two on her in the ring. A bit later, Laurel flies out of nowhere and hits a top rope missile drop kick. It's like she finally woke up and decided she wanted her to wrestle. She tries to hit the Umbrella on Madison who fights it off and kicks her. Madison starts choking her from the top rope now, but she takes too long and Laurel throws her off. She climbs to the top again. Spinelli gets her on her shoulders and hits a reverse electric chair drop, crushing Madison on the map. Spinelli tries to hit the crossroads to LVM, but she reverses it into an Umpredia. And just like that, Laurel Van Ness has won a match, and it was actually good. 12 matches in, and finally, this one's a B, enjoyed it. Match 13, knockouts title match, impact main event. So here's the one that the whole video's been building to. It's Laurel Van Ness versus Rosemary for the vacant knockouts title. Rosemary grabs her around the throat straight away and shoves her across the ring. Laurel tries to go behind, but she's elbowed in the head. She charges at Rosemary, hits her with a big boot. It's not really going well. Rosemary's smacking the shit out of her. Rosemary clotheslines her out the ring now and they both fall to the floor. Laurel finally manages something now as she throws Rosemary into the post. She also slams her head into the entrance ramp. Back in the ring, Laurel gets a two count. Rosemary tries to fight back, but she's thrown to the mat. Now LVN hits a running blockbuster. She tries to pin her three times, but she can't manage it. Rosemary keeps trying to get up, but Laurel slowly stomps on her. I love how Laurel walks around like she's supposed to be hot and desirable, but she has lipstick mashed all over her face at the same time. Shoulders in the corner now, and now we get a submission from Laurel, not something we've seen her try much in this video. It doesn't work though, and Rosemary tries a comeback. Laurel punches her down again and slams her head into the mat. LVN tries to pin her with almost every limb available touching the ropes, not sure if they were meant to do this. Laurel is distracted and clapping like a retarded seal, so Rosemary hangs Laurel across the ropes. Back on the outside of the ring now, Rosemary catches Laurel's kick and throws her overhead for a suplex. That's a double down if I've ever seen one. They both make it back to the ring at 9. LVN charges again, but Rosemary spears her. They both trade reversals now, as they both look to do their finishers. Rosemary ends up stuck on the top rope, and Laurel is frantically hitting her. She is lectured by a 12-year-old referee, so she attacks him. When she turns back around, her opponent tries to spray mist, which LVN blocks. Laurel mashes it into her face and then hits the Umpredia off the top rope, and LVN is the knockout's champion. Can't believe this has happened. Well, as usual, we probably only average 0.25 title reigns on these episodes, so it's always a big deal on Ring of the Hawk when someone wins a belt. It wasn't a technical masterpiece by any standards. It was a slow and awkward match. I think that's what happens when you have two girls fighting a similar style. I'll give it a C because there was effort here and a big title win. Match 14, non-title match. Casey Spinelli versus Laurel Van Ness. Laurel takes too long of her entrance, so her opponent attacks her. She holds the jacket over her head and beats on her. LVN turns it around, sending her into the turnbuckle. Now Laurel stacks her on the middle rope and hits a knee to the gut. And there it is, face driver into the buckle. Laurel gives Spinelli a lecture now about touching her jacket earlier on. The lecture gives Spinelli time to hit a rock bottom. Casey Spinelli follows it at the clothesline. They both trade finisher reversals until Laurel hits an eyelid poke and the weakest looking curb stomp ever. She follows it with some bulldogs, but she can only get a two count. LVN climbs to the top rope, but Spinelli, I think, kicks the ropes or she fucked up. She hits a suplex and wants to bring it into a pin, but Laurel's shoulders just won't go down. The ref somehow gets a one count from this. The crowd boo. Moments later, Spinelli hits a double underhook suplex and does manage a proper pin this time, but that's just a two. Now Spinelli tries to pin Laurel with everyone holding the ropes. Yet again, this stupid 12-year-old referee manages a one count. I'm not sure what's going on in this match. I think they all went out drinking with Laurel. Spinelli argues with the little boy and then Laurel almost rolls her up from this. Both girls kick each other now for a double down. When they get up, Spinelli crashes into the turnbuckle and Laurel is able to hit a few moves. Talking of moves, we get a new one from her now. It's a Russian leg sweep, but it's just a two. Spinelli tries a kick which Laurel blocks and sweeps her legs. She hits the curb stomp and then the Umpredia for the three. She's attacked by fucking Ali after the match because we somehow haven't seen enough of these two together. It's been 15 months, how can they still be feuding? This match is an S, move on before I hit it with a brick. Match 15, knockouts title. Ali, okay, can we please just make this their last one? Just let Ali win this and then she's come full circle and this never ending feud will finally end. 
She of course challenges for Laurel Van Ness's title. They both yank on each other's haircuts until they end up on the outside of the ring. Nothing happens and they come back to the ring where Ali starts beating Laurel up. Ali somehow manages a two count. LVN tries to take a breather on the outside but she's hit by Ali who jumps off the steps. Ali tries a charge on the outside now but she slips and then moments later Laurel hits a pump kick. The match pace crawls to a snail's pace as Laurel slowly beats up Ali. She even kicks her in the vagina. Laurel hits a blockbuster bulldog for a two count. LVN hits a DDT off the ropes which is the most interesting thing to happen in this one. You would have thought this one would have had more energy and hatred considering how long they've been feuding for. Eventually we get a double down. When they get up Ali hits some running punches. She also drop kicks Laurel in the ass. Ali suplexes LVN to the corner but it's still not over here. Ali tries a code breaker which Laurel blocks and puts on the ropes. It doesn't matter anyway because moments later Ali does connect with the code breaker. That's just a two. Ali tries a charge now which is countered with a kick. LVN hits the curb stomp but that's just a two for her. Laurel tries the Umpredia which Ali fights off and hits a super kick. Somehow another two. Then there's a ref bump. I thought we were missing something from this video. Laurel smashes Ali in the face with the belt and it's over. Again, they try it hard in this one, but I really don't think these two work well together either. I feel like I'm saying that a lot. Maybe she just sucks. Ask Mid Cardona. <laughs> it's a C. Match 16, non-title match. LVN, who's a pink mess, versus Kira Hogan, who's making her debut. Laurel yanks on Kira's arm and screams frantically at the sky. Hair takedowns followed by a blockbuster bulldog. She asks the crowd how they like it, but they don't seem impressed. Laurel has now removed her gloves, but all she does is stomps and elbows. The elbows look pretty good to be fair, but why'd she remove her gloves? Hogan is smashed into the turnbuckle now, she's not landed a single punch. Just after that, Laurel misses an attack in the corner and Hogan starts hulking up. She hits an arm drag into a boot which gets her a two count. She tries a dive but Laurel stops and throws her off the top and there's the curb stomp. Laurel wants to hit the Impredia but fucking Ali is here again distracting her. Kira Hogan gets the roll up victory. It was fine, but nothing remarkable. It's a D. You know, it got me thinking at this point. Surely Ali is the heel in this situation. Yes, Laurel was bullying her at first, but she's now been mentally incapacitated for like a year. Surely that's punishment enough. Leave her alone, Ali. Match 17, knockouts title match. Kira Hogan challenges for LVN's title. Hogan hits a couple of arm drags and a drop kick for a two count. Laurel now has pink hair, but she doesn't care as she drops Hogan across the ropes. She also forces Hogan's head into the turnbuckle. Laurel screams at the crowd with them in complete silence. Some hair mares from Laurel now. It's at this point I came to a realisation she's basically the female Samuel Shaw. A person who was putting everything into their gimmick but all she got was complete silence from the crowd. It's hard to explain but nothing they do seems to elicit a reaction from the crowd. Hogan hits a crossbody to the face and a kick also to the face, that's just a two. Hogan screams face the music but Laurel throws her into the ropes and hits the Impredia as one of Hogan's ass cheeks almost falls out. It's a D, like I said, she isn't getting much of a reaction from anybody, including the Hawk. Once again, Ali and LVN must fight after the match because somebody fucking hates me, and oh now it's an no. S. Laurel's had enough of her man troubles now, and she realises that no man would ever want her. She decided to get married to the knockout's title. Yes, this actually happened on Impact. During the segment, Braxton begged to have her back, but she said no to him, and then Beanie Boy walked off looking sad. Unfortunately, for the third time, this wedding would be ruined because Ali was dressed as a cameraman and jumped her. Maybe Laurel should stop trying to get married in the impact zone, it clearly doesn't work for her. Match 18, final match, knockouts title match. The challenger is who else but Ali, because of course it is. This is a match that is somehow two years in the making as we see Ali versus Laurel Van Ness for the 10th time. At least they were consistent. We start with brawling on the ramp whilst Laurel still has her sunglasses on. Ali gets in a ring and she slams her into the turnbuckle. The match is turned when Ali misses a kick in the ring apron and she's sent into the ring pole. As she comes back into the ring, Lowell squashes her with a DDT from the ropes and that's just a two. LVM with a drop kick to Ali's back now while she's on the ropes. The crowd are firmly behind Ali here. Lowell starts chanting Ali's name to take the piss out of them. The 12 year old referee's here again and he isn't impressed with Lowell's antics. LVN starts to flip and she wrenches on the hair as usual. Sloppy looking bulldog now, it looks like it barely hit. This seems to fire up Ali who slaps her and hits some sort of German suplex. LVN sends her into the rope to shut her down. Laurel tries a top rope stomp now which misses and she rolls straight into an Ali code breaker. She can't make the pin and both women are down. Back on their feet Ali is fired up now and she drop kicks Laurel into the turnbuckles and also suplexes her into the corner for a two. Laurel just can't manage anything now, her kick is caught and she's thrown backwards out of the ring, nice. Ali follows her out there but she's speared straight into the ring apron. LVN tries to charge but she misses and smashes into a random chair that was set up. Ali sits her down and hits a charging elbow to Laurel in the chair. 
She no sells it and hits an unprettier to Ali on the outside of the ring seconds later, and she's presumably now dead. Laurel tries to get the count out win, but Ali isn't dead, and she makes it back to the ring at 9. Laurel frantically stamps on Ali, she also stamps her into the turnbuckle. She does this three times while she screams die. Ali's using the ropes to get back up, but she's hit with a curb stomp. It should be over, but Ali makes the ropes to break it. Once again, Laurel wants to hit Ali with the belt. Ali sees it coming and hits a Death Valley driver. She follows it with a super kick and that's the free for game over. Probably the best match of this run or a close tie with that triple threat, it's a B. At least it makes sense having Ali be the one to finally beat her in her final match. After this two year storyline, Ali would leave Impact a year later, so it was probably a waste of time in the first place, but that's not Laurel's fault. Now Laurel would only be done with Impact temporarily. She went off to the WWE for three years, wrestling under the name Chelsea Green, her real name. But it didn't exactly go well there because in three years she only had 11 matches and was injured. She returned to Impact last year where she was no longer Laurel Van Ness. She carried on using her real name and she mostly teamed up with her husband, Mid Cardona. And as far as I know, she's still there and that run's still going. Now before we wrap this up, it's time for a quick segment. Because I just love segments, it's time for yet another Taz Factoid. I got a factoid for both of you guys, I got a boil on my ass. Did you know that Laurel planned on going to the WWE, but Impact did not know this when they put the title on her? So she asked for a release while she was Knockouts Champion. Impact initially refused this request until she dropped the belt. It doesn't sound like she burned bridges too badly because otherwise she wouldn't have been allowed back. And if you don't like this segment, have a smack. So all that's left to do now is shove her a final grade for the Ring of the Hawks Season 2. This is quite a hard one to figure out. The wrestling itself was pretty bad, but her dedication to her character work was excellent. But then on the flip side, I don't think the character was even popular. She wrestled to silence most of the time. She just seemed like a crazy jobber who suddenly got a few wins and became a champion. All that being said, the Hawk would certainly let Chelsea Green do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K. I don't necessarily think I'd have her in a championship capacity, but she did have value. The final grade for Laurel Van Ness on Ring of the Hawk Season 2 is a high D, and if you don't agree with that, I'll make you go pee.